It seems like many people nowadays think of fountain pens as too technical. Sure enough, they need a bit more effort from the users compared to the modern disposable ballpoints. But having a bit of understanding of how the fountain pen works would go a long way to help. This is about building a foundational knowledge for you to build on. I think many of us can recall how some people had difficulties programming the VCR. You want the machine to do something, so you need to press a set of keys in the correct sequence to achieve it. In that sense, you need to build up a mental mapping of what happens behind the keypad as you press the keys. The VCR is an extreme case because with electronics, anything goes. But the fountain pen is a mechanical device and quite a lot simpler. So it is easier to build up a fundamental knowledge or mapping. Now we will look at some pens, starting with the simplest, and work our way up. The earliest form of the fountain pen is the eyedropper filler. The pen has only got four parts: the nib, the feed, the section, and the barrel. The barrel also works as the ink reservoir. The ink enters the feed through an opening at its back, through the ink channel, and towards the nib. The ink forms a film between the nib and the feed, ready to apply ink to the paper. With this understanding, you should be able to figure out that this whole enclosure has to be airtight, except for the front bit. The film of ink between the nib and the feed not only supplies ink to the nib, but also stops ink from flooding out. While it is not strictly chronologically correct, you can now visualize this. You shrink the ink reservoir to a size so small that you need an additional barrel on the outside to make the pen usable. As before, this reservoir can be taken out for filling with ink, or you can get pre-filled ones. When you fit it into the pen, the back of the feed punches a hole through its front, allowing ink to enter the feed as before. This should be easy to understand. These detachable pre-filled ink reservoirs are called cartridges, as they work in the same way as shotgun cartridges. You plug one in, use it up, pull it out, plug in a new one, and start all over again. I talked about these in the previous video, and I've put the link below. Let's look at the eyedropper pen again. We need to open it up and manually fill it with ink, with obviously an eyedropper. So what follows is the self-filling pen with some kind of mechanism built into the pen, so that it would pull the ink into itself through the nib and feed. There are many designs to achieve this. For example, a piston can move up and down the inside of the barrel that fills itself, the same way as a syringe. And there are a few methods for moving this piston. A popular way is to use a screw arrangement. You turn a knob at the end of the pen, and that makes the piston go up and down. There are designs where the piston is operated manually, just like a syringe. Another popular method is to use a rubber sack in the same way as an eyedropper. A rubber sack is attached to the back of the section. When it is squeezed, it expels air from itself. When you let go, ink is pulled into it. There must be dozens of different methods devised over the decades on how to squeeze this rubber sack. Some require squeezing the rubber sack directly. Some require pulling a lever, and some require pressing the button. And many others, but the aim is exactly the same: just squeeze the rubber sack.
Of course, there are other methods in addition to these. The advantage of the self-filling pen is that, as the ink enters the pen from the front, the feet and nib are bound to be full of ink. So it means that the pen is ready to write straight away. For a cartridge pen, you need to wait for the ink to walk its way into the feed through capillary action, which might take a fair few minutes. Most cartridge pens can be converted into self-filling pens to use bottle ink as well. Instead of putting in a cartridge, you put in what we call a converter. Inside the converter, you tend to get a miniaturized version of a self-filling pen. Some of them they've got the rubber sack. Some of them has got a piston. But they all need to be quite small for space saving purpose, so the pen can stay as a convenient and usable size. Some people call any filling mechanism as the converter, but now you should know it's not correct. Now I think I've given you a bit of the foundational knowledge to understand how fountain pens work, and I hope that you won't get intimidated by the technical side of it. As usual, I can only show you where the door is. Whether you want to step through is all up to you. Hope you enjoyed this video, and bye just for now.